So Estonia assumed the presidency of the Council of the European Union for the first time on the first time, in fact, uh, on the first of July uh, of this year, and it's obviously at a, a great time of great upheaval for the European Union. And um, so it's uh, it will be a pleasure for us that um, uh, Chairman Mickelson will outline the Estonian perspective on the broader challenges fa facing the European Union including the future of the EU at 27. Uh, Mr. Mickelson uh, has a, a very broad career, which uh, has, uh, makes him particularly interesting for us in terms of uh, EU policy. Uh, he was educated in Estonia, and um, uh, from 1993 to 2000, he worked in the newspaper industry uh, uh, for the Estonian paper, um, Postimis. He was the newspaper's world news editor and then a Moscow correspondent from 94 to 97 and then editor-in-chief and after which he served as director of the Baltic Centre for Russian Studies from 2000 until he joined par he entered parliament in 2003. Uh, he has three times been chairman of the Foreign Affairs Committee of Parliament, which is probably a record, you know, chairman, I think, in, in parliamentary terms. in parliament. In, yes, <laughs> parliamentary terms. Um, he also served as chair of the EU Affairs and also chair of the National Defence Committee in 2015 until November 2016, when he was again reappointed chair of the Foreign Affairs Committee and he currently holds this post, as well as chair of the Estonian Parliament delegation to the NATO Parliamentary Assembly. Uh, I note also that Mr. Mickelson has received numerous awards. I have actually counted 12, which is uh, also, I think, some kind of record, including from uh, all of the Baltic uh, neighboring states, his own country, of course, Sweden, France, Spain, Italy, Poland, uh, which is an indication of the high regard uh, in which you, you are held. Um, the Estonian presidency uh, has four priorities, I think, which we probably uh, at this stage are well aware of. An open and innovative European economy, a safe and secure Europe, a digital Europe with free movement of data, and an inclusive and sustainable Europe. And all of these, I think Ireland would be very much aligned uh, with this. We are an open economy. We are um, a digital economy looking to broaden our digital services. So I think that is an area in which we would be very, very well aligned. Um, obviously, um, uh, Chairman Mickelson's primary focus is broad foreign and security policy of Estonia within in the EU. Um, I think it's uh, the fact that uh, the chairman has spent some time in Moscow illustrates for us here on the far side of Europe uh, how valuable the membership in the EU of countries such as Estonia is for the EU as a whole. It's so useful to us uh, that you know these countries to the east uh, and that can bring that into the general European discussion as a whole. Um, we look forward very much to hearing um, you outline the European perspective on the broader challenges in Europe from that impressive background. So, Mr. Chairman, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you very much uh, indeed, and uh, very good morning to all of you. Uh, I'm happy to be back in Dublin. Uh, Ireland played a uh, very important part of our recent success uh, in many ways because uh, our accession to European Union uh, happened exactly at the time when you held the presidency in 2004. Uh, but uh, mm, let me uh, just uh, spend uh, roughly 15-20 minutes uh, uh, going around these uh, most important uh, perhaps topics uh, we today uh, uh, see them and how do we them see in, in Tallinn in Estonia uh, which are related both to with our uh, current presidency but also uh, uh, challenges uh, we uh, commonly have uh, uh, for Europe um, uh, internally but also uh, the challenges what are have a uh, global impact uh, first and foremost uh, what is important to uh, remember about uh, Estonia 
is that uh, we are small but a very positively engaged uh, EU European nation. Just uh, two days ago there was uh, another survey of uh, how people uh, would uh, look at uh, uh, the membership uh, in European Union and uh, in Estonia we enjoy at the moment uh, more than 80% uh, support of population to, to the very same question and this has been actually ever since uh, we uh, uh, joined uh, European Union and there are, uh, there are, there are perhaps a number of reasons why is this uh, one of them of course that we have benefited uh, from uh, membership uh, uh, throughout these last 13 years but also, uh, I guess, uh, as we are uh, in our corner of the uh, European Union and uh, geopolitically in very interesting uh, area, of course, um, and uh, taking into account that Estonia was isolated uh, from uh, uh, its natural allies and partners in Europe for a number of years uh, during last uh, uh, century, uh, then the desire of people, uh, and the same applies also uh, to our very good friends uh, to South uh, Latvia and Lithuania, uh, desire to be back uh, there where we belong to. And this is why today we can talk about uh, Estonia and uh, other Baltic states as one of the most integrated, politically integrated uh, uh, Western uh, nations, uh, we, uh, uh, and including, of course, uh, being uh, members of uh, European Union, uh, Eurozone, uh, OECD, but also uh, NATO and a uh, number of other organizations. This is why uh, the presidency for us is uh, not a big deal. Mm. Yes, saying that, of course, uh, uh, I take full responsibility because uh, when I was uh, chair of EU Affairs Committee in our parliament in 2007-2011, uh, I remember in 2009 actually we uh, asked uh, our uh, authorities, uh, uh, five years after membership in, uh, in the EU, could we be ready uh, to take up this res responsibility and, uh, and uh, be a, a present country in the EU and actually that, uh, the answer was yes. So even after the surprise uh, from last year when uh, a referendum happened in a uh, neighboring country and the uh, UK decided not to have presidency this uh, half of the year, uh, then Estonia's presidency moved uh, six months earlier. And, uh, but today we could uh, uh, say uh, that uh, perhaps this was even better uh, for us because it... Uh, pushed us to be even more focused on, uh, on these uh, uh, priorities, as you uh, highlighted them already. And uh, today, uh, then, uh, the leaders of uh, EU uh, uh, are together in Brussels. Uh, there are some sort of uh, uh, also uh, discussion about how well, uh, some of our uh, steps uh, during presidency have been done, including also the summit, digital summit at the end of September. And then uh, we could say that uh, uh, so far, so good. And we are more than sure that uh, during the uh, rest of the time uh, we can uh, handle all the issues, including uh, the major uh, uh, topics uh, of our presidency. Uh, pretty well, but uh, as we all know, a presidency uh, is only for six months, but we have common union and we work as a uh, very strong uh, uh, partner in the union with uh, all of those who uh, have a uh, responsibility to, uh, to rotate as a president country. After us, Bulgaria, then Austria and, uh, and so on and so forth. Now, I, I would like to just... Um, emphasize or underline a few uh, topics and then uh, three challenges what uh, are important in uh, my understanding today to, to pay attention. And of course, uh, as I mentioned, uh, Estonia as one of the most integrated uh, Western countries today, uh, this is uh, natural that uh, the slogan and the main motto of our uh, presidency is unity through a balance. And here we see uh, all the areas of, uh, of uh, interest of the EU 
uh, countries and uh, and and uh, and areas of uh, uh, interest of of uh, members of of union, where Estonia as a small nation uh, uh, is interested to uh, uh, to create uh, more cohesion and. Uh, more common understanding of, uh, of the issues what uh, we face together. And of course, at the same time, to promote uh, perhaps uh, uh, topics or ideas which uh, we have uh, felt uh, at the home, uh, felt in a positive uh, way. And this is why digital uh, Europe is uh, not only uh, something what we thought what could be the interesting topic for for our presidency but this comes from uh, very much from our own experience already what we have witnessed uh, throughout last 25 years of course this is uh, connected to to this how well uh, estonia has been able to use um, uh, technological revolution in terms to make uh, uh, our public services uh, more easily accessible to our citizens uh, and to uh, uh, offer uh, less obstacles, let's say, and to create more transparency uh, in uh, the governance issues. And this e-governance uh, is one of the key topics, not only throughout these uh, this, uh, six months, but has been uh, high, uh, one of the priority of our uh, number of our governments throughout the years. But second area, of course, uh, what uh, we understand uh, is extremely important and where we all can benefit uh, much more than we have done uh, so far is to create digital single market. Of course, as you mentioned, this uh, has been uh, widely discussed among uh, uh, members uh, already for a long time and hopefully by the end of next year, we could create uh, finally uh, the digital single market. And uh, the numbers, uh, at least when we look at uh, these analyses, would, would tell what, what can be unleashed and what kind of potential we could uh, open up for our common economies at uh, 415 billion euros are there to, uh, to generate uh, from this uh, um, uh, open market in the uh, sphere of digital uh, economy. And this is, we, we strongly believe that uh, even perhaps uh, in the area of uh, e governance, uh, there are different views among uh, member states, uh, and there are uh, many reasons to that. We believe, believe strongly that this is future of ours anyway, uh, and will uh, will be there because this is something what will transform our societies, our way of work, our way of uh, uh, of, uh, of common action, if to put it this way. Second question, of course, what is uh, extremely important for citizens of uh, Europe uh, today is a question about uh, security perhaps security and defense, and uh, one of uh, uh, topics what is uh, uh, discussed among uh, specifically ministers of defense, uh, uh, but not only, uh, there has been a much wider uh, political di discussion about that. Do Europe, does Europe uh, need a sort of own uh, defense identity and what, uh, what that means? at the time when we have a uh, uh, NATO, we have a strong transatlantic uh, uh, cooperation in, in the field of security and defense and historically very uh, deep-rooted. Um, Estonia is uh, in favorable position, of course, of uh, creating PESCO, uh, permanent structures cooperation in, uh, in this field. But let me uh, say, uh, not going into details, and hopefully, of course, the agreement will be by the end of the year, but, but uh, the, the, the experience uh, from uh, uh, last, let's say, 10 or 20 years of uh, defense uh, debate or CSDP issues, uh, uh, the question is that we have uh, perhaps so far lack the will, of kind of political will, of uh, to use uh, already existing, uh, uh, let's say, formats on the existing uh, capabilities, uh, to just mention 
uh, the EU uh, battle groups. Uh, they have been there, but uh, we never managed to create enough uh, political support in order to use them in the interest of um, in, in a common interest. Uh, hopefully, this uh, debate will lead us to the understanding uh, what are the actually necessities uh, for EU. Uh, as union uh, to use uh, uh, in the future uh, these common capabilities and plus of course uh, a number of other technicalities how do we get perhaps uh, uh, look at uh, the standards what we have in uh, defense uh, industry uh, within Europe uh, and can we uh, uh, create some uh, uh, better cooperation in that field and of course last but not least we all can talk about uh, defense uh, as much as we uh, as much as possible but without real investment into uh, uh, defense expenditures uh, this is just uh, going to be empty uh, uh, empty discussion and Estonia has uh, shown uh, already for the last uh, six years uh, their strong uh, uh, interest to invest into own defence capabilities. Currently, defence expenditures running at a level of 2.2%. And there is very strong and uh, common position among political parties. There is no uh, debate at all in, in this regard. And now, three major topics, perhaps, which are uh, not only directly related... And, and last but not least, of course, the question about Brexit. Uh, before I jump into this, uh, to, to talk about three uh, uh, global challenges. Uh, here, um, uh, of course, uh, the question is uh, put up how well EU uh, 27, let's say, uh, is keeping uh, unity. Uh, and uh, we all exercise this very first time what is going on. And I have met both David Davies and Michel Barnier uh, before negotiations uh, started. And, uh, and uh, perhaps uh, this optimism of what was uh, uh, seen before uh, negotiations today has gone a little bit down. But again, we have to take into account these are extremely difficult uh, negotiations. Uh, but uh, a uh, co couple of uh, main points, how do we see it? The, for Estonia, there is no doubt the EU27 should maintain strong unity in, uh, in uh, this process of, um, of negotiations. Uh, you know, uh, then we tackle all uh, major questions, um, uh, either it's our citizens' rights or question about the future uh, let's say, financial settlement, and uh, last but not least, of course, uh, what is very much uh, connected to, to Ireland as well, the question about uh, the border. Uh, and uh, so far, as far, uh, again, leaders meet today in, uh, in Brussels, there is no uh, readiness uh, to uh, jump uh, uh, forward to the next phase to talk about uh, the future relations. And this is, uh, has been a uh, kind of uh, agreed uh, strong position uh, among EU27. And the first, we have to settle these uh, uh, Brexit questions or exit <laughs> questions and then uh, to move on with, uh, with future topics. But we all know that time is running, uh, perhaps not yet running out, but uh, there is not uh, much uh, left uh, if we think about uh, the... March in 2019, but I leave it uh, this question right now there. Three uh, topics: uh, what are uh, have been in interest of ours and uh, and which are uh, directly affecting, uh, of course, uh, EU uh, in general. Uh, there has been a lot of critics about EU and perhaps also about that that. Uh, Liberal world order has a uh, lot of uh, challenges and perhaps there are many cracks today within this liberal world order. But uh, from our point of view, EU has done a great job in order to bolster uh, actually the very same uh, liberal world order. 
and uh, in, uh, in a way where uh, EU has been uh, in very strong leading position. One is uh, uh, the pa Paris Agreement on climate uh, change uh, uh, issues. We all almost daily witness stories all around the world and Ireland uh, has been uh, uh, also in, uh, in this, uh, uh, let's say, news line recently, unfortunately. Even Estonia actually was very much connected to your last uh, hurricane oh. because uh, all this sand from Sahara and uh, also dust from uh, Portugal uh, came up to, uh, to, to us and we had just two days ago a very dark day and you get uh, just uh, feel that uh, something is uh, it was like e e e e eclipse of uh, of a sun you know oh. <laughs> but it's uh, it's 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 uh, of course directly connected to this what is um, happening in uh, in, a, in a global climate uh, and here EU has done great job second area of, of course is uh, a promoter of free trade uh, just the Estonian Parliament recently ratified the CETA agreement, uh, uh, the free trade agreement between EU and Canada. Estonia is very uh, much dependent on uh, on how uh, successful we are in our export, in our uh, trade with uh, our partners uh, globally, and here EU with. Uh, sets of uh, free trade agreements uh, have uh, shown that actually uh, we can create uh, new rules and new areas of uh, common uh, uh, trade uh, and this is something where we are strongly supporting uh, further um, uh, agreements uh, like with uh, Japan, uh, other uh, Southeast Asia countries and hopefully one day we could come back to the track of uh, having the same negotiations again with the uh, United States. Now, uh, and here perhaps I would like to argue that uh, Estonia is a very transatlantically minded uh, country, uh, transatlantist country, perhaps a little bit different reason uh, as uh, Ireland has and, uh, and uh, uh, the different history, of course, but uh, we have uh, enjoyed a very strong uh, uh, bilateral uh, relations uh, on different level with, uh, with the United States. And, and uh, even since uh, the number, November 8th of last year, I could tell you I've never uh, been able to uh, have uh, as many meetings uh, with my colleagues from Senate and House of Representatives have uh, has been the case uh, since uh, last year. And uh, on Sunday, the another delegation again from U.S. Senate is uh, waiting us in uh, Tallinn. So uh, this is uh, the uh, not sort of uh, trapping ourselves with. Uh, tactical, political, uh, let's say, uh, everyday uh, interesting bits and pieces, we have to look at the bigger picture and bigger picture is that uh, for Europe, the absolutely the best ally and best partner is in this turbulent world, uh, United States. Second big topic, what we in Estonia uh, deal with, of course, is a question about migration crisis. Perhaps we are in a similar position like uh, Ireland and here uh, directly the crisis ha has not uh, you know, touched us. Uh, Estonia is uh, not destination country for those who uh, have left their homes uh, in Africa or in the uh, Middle East. But we very seriously uh, are concerned about uh, how this uh, full topic is influencing uh, uh, politics in uh, in our uh, member in our partner countries in our uh, among our allies, uh, we have seen recently this uh, happening in different uh, countries during different elections. But what is most important is that we uh, today have no taboos uh, politically uh, when we discuss about migration, immigration, illegal immigration, and what uh, can be done uh, together. Both. Uh, uh, bolstering security uh, in uh, within the union, but also how we could better deal with uh, protecting our 
uh, borders. Estonia also is a, on the border of EU and we very seriously take uh, our responsibility uh, to uh, keep uh, our eastern border and the border of EU very safe. Uh, but we all understand how much more difficult it is uh, uh, in the south uh, on Mediterranean. Uh, but uh, these efforts, what the EU has done both through uh, uh, common mission, but also helping uh, uh, sovereign countries. Uh, uh, this is something what is in, in should be in common interest of, uh, of uh, union members of all. And also, last but not least, uh, not only protecting borders, but to uh, to ta tackle these real problems, what uh, will cause uh, migration of people from their homes in Africa or in the Middle East, both conflicts, but also. Uh, issues what are related to climate change or to uh, uh, bad governance uh, uh, and this is uh, uh, perhaps uh, we could highlight during uh, upcoming uh, summit EU Africa summit which is planned for uh, November and last but not least Russia uh, this is uh, perhaps our biggest uh, concern uh, and uh, not ours as Estonia uh, but uh, ours as uh, countries who uh, uh, very strongly believe to democracy, to rule of law, to international law and, uh, and the way of life, how we have, uh, our societies have benefited since the end of co uh, not only Cold War, but since the end of World War II. Unfortunately, what we have seen during not only last three years since uh, Russian uh, aggression against uh, Ukraine, but basically since uh, mid-90s, that uh, Russia has not changed, unfortunately. And uh, the, the way how uh, uh, Russia is, uh, or Russian leadership is uh, running the country is in many way, ways in contradiction to their own constitution, what was agreed by uh, Russian people in '93. If you read this constitution, it's a very democratic one, but what happens in reality is something what uh, we have seen, unfortunately, many, many uh, decades uh, in case of Soviet Union or Tsarist Russia. Uh, they um, pose today, we could say, real threat uh, to uh, foes uh, who uh, actually uh, highlight uh, the democracy and, uh, and uh, democratic values as a high priority. And this is not only neighboring countries uh, to Russia, but uh, uh, Europe as at large. Um, uh, and uh, perhaps one of the main aims uh, the current Russian leadership already for many years have uh, to, uh, to create situations where we can uh, redefine uh, Euro-Atlantic uh, security architecture. Um, and this is why we shouldn't forget that uh, uh, already in 2008, Russia started, uh, when they uh, started the war against uh, Georgia, they actually started it against NATO uh, because it was uh, directly uh, connected to, uh, to stop uh, NATO to enlarge into South Caucasus. And in 2014, when uh, Russia uh, attacked uh, Ukraine, uh, occupied Crimea, annexed uh, Crimea, and then launched attack against the eastern Ukraine, uh, this was uh, indirect uh, attack against Europe, against the European Union. Because, as you remember, uh, 2013, one of the triggers of those events in Ukraine was association agreement uh, of uh, Ukraine uh, with the uh, European Union and uh, the question is, of course, that uh, current Russian leadership uh, unfortunately sees uh, in uh, democratic uh, processes direct uh, and per perhaps existential threat to their own interests at home. And this is unfortunately has led us to the situation we have already for three years, sanction policy. This has been uh, successful uh, for EU to show strong unity and understanding that we cannot tolerate uh, a breach of international law as uh, Russia has done in the uh, case of occupying and annexing uh, uh, Crimea and uh, still uh, the aggression unfortunately is going on against Ukraine almost every day, every single day Ukrainian soldiers 
uh, are killed or wounded uh, on a front line. Uh, this is somehow forgotten war today, but forgotten war inside of Europe. And uh, this is something what is a key element uh, for the future as well. Uh, and uh, one of the um, highlights of our presidency, and here I sum up, is uh, the Eastern Partnership uh, Summit, which is uh, going to be uh, uh, held on uh, uh, 24th of November in Brussels. Uh, we very much uh, uh, highlight this as, 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 a, as an interest of not only countries who are closer to eastern uh, borders of the European Union, but this, as I said, is, is uh, in our common interest to uh, really help those uh, uh, who would like to live in uh, the very same way, in many ways, to honour uh, rule of law, democ democracy, market economy and, uh, and uh, also to uh, help those governments and help those people first and foremost who would like to uh, reform their societies and countries in uh, this particular way. Thank you.